think I'm on. I should probably be live by now. Hopefully that's the case. Let's see here. Does it say live? Okay. Hey everyone. Thanks for joining me this evening. So hopefully you enjoyed that premiere video on Tyler Kerbless Shower. If you didn't watch it and you're watching this later on, be sure to find the link in the description on that video. So I put a lot of effort into that one. This is a pretty awesome shower uh, that I did this last summer. Hey everyone. Thanks for joining me this evening. So why am I hearing myself that here? Premiere video on Tyler Kerbless Shower. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I will get, I either have to buy a program to get better at getting at the right time on this or something, but I'm sorry. I, every time I come in here, you guys are probably skipping through like this guy doesn't know how to use any of this stuff. Anyways, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, I'm Steve White, if you don't know me by now, but uh, hey, thanks for everybody who's subscribing to this new channel. It's really tremendous to see hundreds of people joining every day on this. And uh, I'm hoping, I mean, obviously, I'm hoping that uh, all the content I'm bringing out here is helping you with your own project. So uh, this is just a live Q&A. This is just to get to know you guys a little bit better and uh, answer any questions that you might have. But I also wanted to go over a couple other systems. I kind of went through my library of projects I've done over the last 15, 20 years. And, uh, and I wanted to just show you some of them and, and kind of talk about the experiences that I had with them. I've done a lot of different water, um, curblish type of systems. And, uh, the one, the reason I'm starting out on my channel with this one, with the, the, the weedy one is because I do feel like it's the easiest one out there at this moment. Now these manufacturers keep coming out with things that make things easier and better. Uh, but this one really is really simple. Make sure you check that out on my YouTube channel uh, or if you I'll eventually have this into a course format so that you can really step you through on the installation of this. But um, I've always liked Weedy. I've been using them for almost 15 years now. Never really had much of an issue with them. Uh, I had a couple of issues with the drain connection at once, but that was more of installer error. Uh, other than that, everything, um, you know, it's been pretty bulletproof. So I've been really happy with it. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, I'm going to just show you a couple other systems, though. But I did want to highlight really what the most critical part of doing a curbless shower is, uh, in my mind, as far as tiling process goes. And that was making sure that you separate that thin set layer between the outside floor and the inside of the shower area. So as I was representing in that video, you always basically you start with the outside tile first so that you can line up your tile nicely at uh, that joint. Otherwise, you know, if you set your shower floor first, you're gonna have a hard time uh, basically making that transition nice and even. A lot of the times when you set your outside floor, it's a little bit thicker than the shower floor area, and that causes problems um, lining everything up. Because that's, you know, if you're going curbless, you need to have that nice and seamless. You don't want to have any jagged edges from tile in any, you know, other end of the floor. But I just wanted to show you this real quick, uh, again, to reiterate. This is only a couple minutes, but I really do feel like this is one of the most important parts of a curbless shower and it's because in my own experience i've had issues where i had water migration coming out of the shower area and then you know either leaking down into the side walls of the house or um, just puddling in the middle of the room and it was all because of capillary water movement that was coming through the thin set layer so if you don't separate that thin set layer you can have problems so this is very simple but it's a very important concept and that is just to separate this thin set layer so I'm just going to take a generous bead of weedy sealant and go right along the edge of this tile. And it's just as simple as that. That's separating that thin set layer. So now water is not going to siphon into the thin set layer and get outside of the shower. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's a very simple concept, but I don't see too many people talking about this issue. I don't see it in the TCNA handbook of any sort. I don't see it uh, by these manufacturers who are making this, talking about this joint. I don't know. I mean, you know, really, you know, probably the biggest reason I've ever had issues in the past was probably because um, there might have been a blockage in the weep pull system of the system I was using, and that's what allowed the water to kind of um, migrate out of the shower area. But regardless, water is going to get underneath the towel one way or another. And, you know, if you're saturating that thin set layer, it's a really good, it is a good possibility that water could, um, you know, come through uh, that thin set layer and get into the outside floor, especially if for any reason that your outside floor 
area is lower than the shower. Now, obviously, you know, when you're building the shower, you're not, it's not going to be tremendously lower, but it might, maybe it's maybe in the middle of the room it has, or, you know, maybe two feet out of side of the shower area, you know, you kind of have a dip in the floor. And if that were to be the case, then you're kind of, it's just like putting a hose in a bucket and siphoning out water with a hose, you know, water's going up and out of that hose and siphoning out of the bucket. That's what can happen in this scenario. If that thin set layer has enough um, water saturation for it to pull out. And you'll see a lot of, um, I don't have any um, demonstrations of this, but if you look online about curbless shower failures, you'll see where the entrance of the shower, even two feet out of that shower area, is all saturated with water. So that's why you all, it's always important to waterproof your entire shower area when you're um, doing a curbless system. So, But I wanted to show you one other thing that I did not highlight in here, uh, which was uh, if you're doing a... Um, where do we have it? If we are doing a glass shower enclosure of some sort, this is a really uh, great product for curbless showers because it'll eliminate you penetrating any of the U-channel or any type of fixture that you're actually uh, installing the glass with. So if you're doing custom glass, uh, I would rec highly, highly recommend this Deco SG. So I wanted to just show you real quick how this is installed. Is it not going to play for me here? Okay, so if you have the opportunity, I highly recommend installing this Schluter Deco SG profile, the profile that the fixed panels will be sliding into. I really highly recommend this on curbless showers because that prevents you from putting any screws into the waterproofing. So I have a laser here and a square, just making sure that my shower area is square and equal distance from the wall and you can use a standard trim saw to cut the u-channel just please use some safety glasses um, because those shards do fly out now for the door or the fixed panel area i would deduct three inches three eighths of an inch off of the width of that so that if your door is 28 inches you want to measure out 28 and three eighths and cut your channel to that now i do recommend installing the outside floor First, when you're doing a curbless shower so that you can slide the U-channel into place. And then this also really makes it easy for you installing the shower floor tile. You can meet it up with the outside floor tile. So as you can see, very simple, just sliding that Deco SG channel into the tile work. And then you want to shim some things up uh, using some spacers if you're, you know, obviously your pan is sloping towards the drain. So you want to make sure that reveal stays the same. Okay, so yeah, that, that's basically one item I think that if you're planning ahead for a curbless shower, it's really important to use that, um, you know, because there's nothing worse than, you know, even if you had a uh, custom glass, the safe you don't want to get into and in actually installing a glass, at least install that U-channel so that when you get a glass guy come out there, he can measure it and eventually put it in there. Because there is a lot of, um, unfortunately, glass companies that, you know, I've actually seen where they're putting screws right into your waterproofing. And that's a real bad idea. I mean, that's just as bad as, um, you know. Uh, that that's, that's definitely an area where water is going to build up and you'll possibly go into and penetrate into your floor. You, you don't want to be spending all this money on all this waterproofing and then have something like that happen. So, um, But I did want to show a couple other alternatives to the weedy system. Uh, so if you didn't watch the previous videos, you know, make sure to go on my YouTube channel and find them. Um, I have them all underneath the master um, small master bathroom playlist. Uh, but you know, the, the system that we obviously used in this particular situation was the weedy system. And, um, like I said, it's a, one of the easiest ones to use because it's three quarters of an inch thick. It meets up with your plywood greatly when you actually remove the actual floor area. So this is what that waterproofing looked like prior to setting all of that tile. You can see, I have my waterproofing wrapped up on the edges of the wall as well. So everything is 100% sealed all the way around in that bathroom so uh, really isn't going to be much problem with any water migration outside of the shower um, but you know this is probably one of the more expensive systems that you can install for waterproofing it's just the nature of the system but there's a lot of great benefits of it um, i'm not really trying to promote weedy i'm not going to be sponsored by any of these companies this is just something that i've found to be very user friendly very easy to install but you know just know that this shower this is basically a three by four shower 
roughly cost about twelve hundred dollars for all of the waterproofing that was associated with it. So it is it does have a high price tag. And uh, that is one of the painful parts of um, a lot of these curbless systems. You're going to find that out with most of all of them. They're going to be uh, costly. So this is a, a couple other showers I've installed over the years using the Weedy system. You know, I really had a hard time finding good photos. It's one great thing about, I think, I can't remember when I got an iPhone. Maybe that was 2007 or 6 or 7. But man, it made things so much nicer to make sure you get your photos of your work. But these are a couple different uh, just examples of the Weedy system that I've installed. And uh, I didn't get the finished pictures of this, but this was like a... Uh, a glass pebble stone but I wanted to show you uh, another alternative on setting a glass enclosure and you know these are all kind of highlighted in my guide that I have created so make sure you go into the description of this video and the video prior and get this guide for curbless showers I go through all the different scenarios of most common size bathrooms and then I go into the con pros and cons of all these different systems but there's really uh, at this moment there's only like really four systems that I've really been using over the years uh, until somebody comes out with something better but uh, Schluter has a couple of ways of going about going curbless uh, if you like those linear channel drains that look really awesome this is one way to do it the only problem is you're going to have to put the drain at the shower entrance of the bathroom unless you can get the height of the outside floor to be raised uh, over an inch um, to do that. So there is uh, height problems with the floor sometimes um, and, you know, a Schluter channel drain would definitely be one of those scenarios, but it is great because it's all sloped on one side. Uh, and you know, if you get a drain that goes from wall to wall, you're not going to have any issues with water coming out of that area. Um, but this is a, yeah, this is a great way to go about it. And what's really universal about Schluter too, is that you can easily dry pack any areas that you need to fill in. So this is actually my personal home. This is my own, um, shower that I have in my, in my home. But, uh, basically the same scenario went with this, where you took out the three quarter inch plywood within the shower area and then you installed this pan but this is a four foot long shower so the pan came 38 inches by 72 and i had to cut that down to fit um the, the, the width of the room so to fill in that extra uh 10 inches of room you know i'm using a little bit of detra and then i'm going to be dry packing over top of that area and then basically just curdy membraning over top of that area so schluter really is a very uh, versatile product when it comes to uncommon areas or uh, configurations and it allows you to dry pack and just kind of um, make that shower area anything that you want so it is really great for that um, but yeah so i'm just going through and just showing the dry pack that i'm installing here i actually did do heated flooring in this bathroom as well uh which you know in a big shower it's actually pretty dang nice uh because most of, you know a lot of people have always commented like well why would you put heated flooring in a shower uh don't you you know you turn on the water and you have hot water well you know with a big shower like this you're not going to have a lot of heat on the back end of the shower so um you know it, it is i you know i thought it was crazy at first too but here's the finished product again this is the my own personal uh, master bathroom it's basically five foot by 12 foot long um, but it really great it came out with a great look and um, i really do like the linear drain look i just have we've really had a, a real issue with cleaning it though that i'm not real happy with so um, linear drains are definitely uh, more maintenance as far as cleaning because ju it's just the nature of the trough and then hair getting stuck in that drain and then it's just like a lot bigger area to clean out so just know that if you're gonna go and invest into linear drains but it is a really really beautiful looking way to do it as uh savvy look good to see you thanks for coming stopping in here today um so this is another system i've used uh quite a few times actually more times than i actually thought i did and i'll show you some of the images that i would use on it but this is called the vim system v-i-m and it's basically a four by five pan that you can cut and modify most you know most people are probably replacing their tubs and installing a walk-in shower uh so you're going to be cutting down this pan but you have the ability to to make it what you want in a lot of ways but it's very very durable like i don't know what it's made out of it's like an abs material but it's really thick 
And I would really highly recommend this type of system for like wheelchair accessibility, uh, just because of how strong and, and capable of this pan is. It's not made out of foam like Schluter or Weedy, uh, and it really does have um, a lot of strength to it. The drain covers are really awesome on these two, which I was, uh, you know, they just look really nice. They're six inch like wide looking drains. Um, but this is, uh, yeah, it's basically just the, the pre-pitching of the floor, and then you have to add waterproofing all the way around the system after you install it. So it's more or less just a, uh, a pre-formed base, and then you have to go ahead and move where. Whereas the Schluter system or Weedy, it's already kind of waterproof. You're just sealing the edges, and you're ready to go, where this thing needs completely waterproofed on top. But Again, it's a really it's a really great system. This was basically a 32 inch by 60 inch wide shower. The tub used to be there, and then uh, the, the drain's a little weird as far as the installation, but it's not a it's not a very difficult installation at all. And then, as you can see here, this is where you're using a liquid waterproofing, um, like a uh, a laticrete system uh, with the the mesh bands in the corners. So this was actually a flip home that I, I sold uh, about three or four years ago before the market really went crazy. Kind of makes me wish I would have uh, held on to it. Probably would have got another 50 grand out of the house. Um, but yeah, this is a, uh, it's called Hydro Barrier uh, by uh, Laticrete. And they just have a full mesh that they put on the floor. So this is a little bit more work. But again, if you have a wheelchair accessibility issue or anything like that, this is probably the system for you because it's such a rock solid base. And uh, again, you're just buying it. Uh, you know, it just has it's just one standard kit, a four by five shower. And as you can see, the entire bathroom is completely waterproof, but it really has a, a beautiful look to it. Um, you know, those drains are really sexy looking and it was, uh, yeah, they're a lot of fun to do. So these are a couple other showers over the years that I've done with this same system uh, this was a, a really beautiful bathroom here near um, pittsburgh here uh, this is another system that you can go ahead and use so this is uh this is almost similar to that vim system you might have seen these online a lot of different weird sizes here there's no doubt they have uh that's one of the weird things about uh the arc true deck so this is still gonna you know i mean by the time you're done you're still talking about a thousand dollars to get a curbless shower. So if you're removing your tub and putting in a curbless shower, um, you know, these type of systems are still the most expensive, but this is the same kind of composite material as the Vim system. And it, uh, you know, again, if you had needed a wheelchair or something, you needed to have that extra durability, this is the way to go. It's just one really odd thing about this system is that they have all these weird widths that you have to feather out with, um, a patching material to continue the slope in the corner so if you wanted like a 30 by say if you had a tub and you wanted to replace it and do a walk-in shower you'd be most likely getting this 59 inch pan that's wide by 32 inches and and then feathering out that extra half inch on either side of the wall a little weird not a really big de deal though but the drain locations are also not centered so that's kind of can be sometimes frustrating uh with um you know, depending on what kind of tile layout you're using. So a um, little goofy, but I mean, it's still a great system. This is one I really uh, had a lot of fun with. This is, man, this is probably going back eight years, but I did put a lot of blocking in between. Now, this was a um, engineered home that has engineered joists, as you can see, truss joists, and these are basically 19 and a quarter inches apart. So you need to have additional framing if you have engineered joists like this to support this this deck now this does not require um you know a plywood subfloor at all you can literally just as long as you have 16 inches on center you can just set this right over your joist um and and be able to it has enough support on its own that you don't actually need to recess plywood underneath of that which can be helpful in different scenarios like when, well i mean depends on you know where your plumbing is and and what's underneath your floor but knowing that you don't actually have to recess the floor can uh help out in a lot of different situations so um so that's the installation of it and as you can see you can see how much room i have over here and how there's like a, a almost an inch here so all of this area you need to put a a, a mesh over and then a patching material and continue the slope 
of that shower pan. So that's one odd, odd thing about the arc system. But it there's you know it's it's a process. Uh, it, it is a little bit more time consuming, definitely more time consuming than a weedy system or a Schluter system for sure. Um, but again, wheelchair accessibility comes out like beautiful, really nice looking shower. Now I would not after this particular installation. I do not recommend my clients per you know do actual pebble stone um, on a curbless system. A lot of times there just isn't enough slope. Uh, the weedy system does all right, but when you're looking at this is basically a, a, a six by five. Uh, well, I guess with the bench it's about four foot, so basically four by five. Um, there wasn't a lot of slope. You know, there's not a lot of slope on some of these. Some of these I think they do have a little less of a pitch than a quarter inch per foot that you really want to have for a drain location. So having regular pebble stones, as beautiful as that looks, it doesn't drain all that well or that quickly. So I would refrain from doing actual pebble stones, unless you're doing a basement bathroom of some sort where you can pitch that a lot more for yourself. Um, but ultimately, pebbles kind of suck on any shower floor. Look how much grout that is. It's a tremendous amount of grout. Um, it's something that's going to, you know, constantly need clean. Soap scum loves to just kind of sit in grout. So looks beautiful, but not very practical if you ask me. But it definitely did cook a nice picture. I don't know. Definitely took a nice picture. This is the arc uh, shower pan again. Um, this one I did end up putting a little bit of support and putting a mortar bed underneath of it. Um, but this was another beautiful deal. This is the particular bathroom that I actually had an issue with capillary water movement coming outside of the shower. So this is where my experience comes from, from uh, wanting to make sure that you caulk that joint at your tile layer. So this particular bathroom, and it, they didn't call me back for two years. It, it took like two years for any indication of problems going on. But what had you know what had happened in the middle of this bathroom floor? It, it was a big home, so and the bathroom was like what 13, 12 by sixteen, twelve by fifteen, something like that. It was a huge bathroom, and there was a little bit of a um, a divot in the middle of the room. So there was like a little bit of a slope, and. Uh, what I think really happened was on this drain system, the weep holes are very, very small. And I think what happened is that those weep holes got clogged and allowed some back pressure of water. So the water's getting through the towel layer, water's not being able to escape into the drain properly. So it's backing up and then it's going right through that thin set layer and then traveling outside of the floor. When I came to look at the project, they had already called a bunch of plumbers to try to find out what the issue was because it was a couple years after I actually did the bathroom. And uh, they couldn't figure it out. They had no understanding. There was nothing clogged in the drain. There was nothing that they could see that was wrong. And that's when I came up with, um, you know, searching online and trying to figure out things. Um, there was this one, um, I can't remember what his name was, but it was on a contractor talk forum talking about capillary water movement and how important it is. And then once I started studying that, I'm like, oh, that must be what it is. So all I had to do um, was first off, make sure I uh, unclogged those weep holes, just making sure that, you know, inside the drain that they you can see uh, an area for water come up. But then secondly, I just took out all the grout in between this transition and then just filled it with a matching silicone caulk that went all the way down to the waterproofing. And then I, that was it. That's all it took. So very, very important. Now, obviously, there's two problems here. One, the weep holes were clogged that caused the issue in the first place. But if you, you know, if I would have caulked that tile to the waterproofing to begin with, I would have never had uh, the significant issue that we did. So, again, it's just a board thing. Here's another one with the uh, arc system. And, uh, yeah, so I've done a lot of uh, curbless showers uh, with many different systems. This is one. Um, yeah, this is a great one. This is a four by five shower. These, this is really popular. You know, if you get something this size, you can just put one single pane of glass and have the back entrance open, which is really nice. Um, so this is, uh, you know, when you get a four by five shower, you can get away with not having to be completely encircled with glass, which is great. This is the basement 
option. So when you're coming into curbless showers for basements, this is where I would recommend just doing a mud bed because you're most likely going to have to move the drain anyways. This is probably the most, this is one of the simplest ways. This is, I was using a linear drain. This was another flip home that I did a few years ago. And basically we just cut out all of the concrete in the basement floor. I put uh, about two inches of, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, high strength concrete underneath of it. Uh, you want to thin set below that layer and then pack uh, mud underneath of it. So this was a real simple uh, way to go about it because then you can just screed your mud in one direction towards the drain. And this has that look that everybody's looking for where the drain is on the back side of the wall. Uh, when you're doing a basement and you have a concrete options, it's a much, much easier to do all of this. So I'm probably going to be doing a lot more mud here in the future just because uh, of the issues with the supply chain, getting all types of different mater materials, uh, because really the methods of, in of doing mud is really not that difficult. But again, a lot of these foam systems, they're just faster. I mean, they're just simply much faster for you to get into the tiling process. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's really simple. Basements, I would definitely always just do a mud bed. And this is just like a liquid waterproofing system that you go over top of it. But yeah, it has that nice look in the back uh, with the, the channel drain in the back corner there. This is one that if you have the ability to, and you can actually uh, cut down the framing, you could do a, a mud pack job with a linear drain uh, in in your flooring. But now this is all dependent on whether you can actually notch out your joists and lower the shower system. Uh, when you're doing mud beds of any sort, you're going to want to have three quarters of an inch uh, at least with linear drains, you're going to have to have that three quarters of an inch at the, the drain location. So, you know, add that up per quarter inch per foot. And, you know, you have to do the math on that. But in this particular bathroom, this was a four by five shower. So I had uh, four or five foot of width that was coming down. So that's an uh, inch and a quarter that I had to drop. Um, so actually inch and a quarter plus three quarter because you wanted to have three quarters of inch of mud at the entrance or at the channel drain. So you're talking about notching the joist two inches. Now you really need to have an engineer to be able to dictate whether you can do that or not. Um, you know, and it obviously depends on the type of framing. If you're in a newer home, you're probably not gonna have that capability because you're gonna have, you know, eye joist or engineer joist now that just you can't do anything to them. But some of this old framing, depending on where your load bearing wall is and stuff, you might very well be able to just take two inches off of that uh, framing and, 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 and lower it and, and do that pretty simply. So, but this was another, this is one of my first, uh, linear drain systems. This is what really took my business to the next level. Once I did this bathroom, you know, I ended up getting, um, a lot more, a lot, lot more jobs. Now this one is actually, I should say this one. Now you could see how the entrance of the shower is. This is where this is always a problem when you're sloping in one direction and you're walking around a panel that way, you're going to have the floor kind of raising up. You know, this is going to be obviously meeting flush here and then dropping all the way down this location. Now, this was all travertine. So the edging of this travertine was able to easily be, um, you know, kind of honed or finished. So it looked just fine. But if you're doing some kind of porcelain or had that, you know, the porcelain I just installed in that video with the red clay base, that's going to look awful. So you have to put some edging on the edges. Now I was going to have my glass panel sitting right on this edge. So it kind of hid any type of look to the edge. Uh, but they do make some uh, Schluter edging for situations like this. Um, but yeah, this is always kind of a, a head scratcher on on how to finish that tile uh, when you have it going from nothing down to like an inch and a quarter like that. Now this was called the um, Noble Drain, N-O-B-L-E Drain. This, this is another great system. That was the Noble Liner that I installed on everything too, uh, which was a great system, very thick, very well made. Again, I'm not a big fan of the channel drains anymore have, now that I have that one in my own home. First thing I need to explain to you. Um, mainly just because of the cleaning problem. So I do have the one video on my YouTube channel about that. But here is another traditional uh, system. This is gonna be an upcoming video of series that I'm gonna have uh, on my channel here, but this is uh, a live demonstration. It's already on my YouTube channel of the curbless uh, Schluter system. This is probably really honestly one of the most affordable ways to do 
a uh, curbless system if you're on a second floor with a wood subfloor. Uh, again, the basements, you probably want to uh, do a, uh, a mud bed is probably the best way to go. But on a second story, Schluter pans, very not very expensive. Most of them, I think, uh, 150 bucks for a Schluter pan. Now, they do have a thickness, and we're going to get into that right here, uh, explaining some of those issues there. Recess. So these are my existing joists here. And what I did was just remove the plywood in this entire area. And I basically put blockers, two by four blockers, three quarters inch below my joists. And then I basically just put plywood in between them. So basically making all my plywood flush with the top of my joists. Now, these bigger pans, these, these 38 by 60 pans, they're an inch and an eighth thick. So that's not exactly um, going to even up with three quarter inch plywood. So what I did was I added quarter inch strips on top of the joist on the outside of the floor and I, I put all new plywood in. So if you had an existing floor, the way that you would deal with this extra quarter inch is you can use a thicker Vitra mat, um, which is basically a waterproof mat that would raise the outside floor or you can use floor leveler that's not you can floor level your whole outside floor so yeah and floor leveler is probably you know i think that's going to make the most sense for most situations but if you're replacing your plywood in your bathroom if you're doing a five by eight bathroom and you're putting in a curbless shower just remove your sub flooring all the way around that entire bathroom add those quarter inch strips under on top of your joists and then add uh your new three quarter inch plywood and you'll have the the a, the, the perfect depth to be able to get that Schluter pan in. That's really, honestly, the simplest way. Um, I, you know, there's really, I mean, if you're getting into this level of changing your bathroom, I, like I, you keep hearing me say on this channel, gut your bathroom, get rid of all the drywall or the plaster that you have existing there. Make sure you check out that plumbing. Um, if you're going to go to this extent to where you're going to change out your tub and install a walk-in shower and you're going to go curbless, there's a lot involved there. So you might as well gut the whole room all the way down to the studs so you can inspect that electrical, move that plumbing, make sure all the copper and everything that you're connecting to is in good shape. And then when it comes to the framing, you just can simplify it by just you know simply adding on those quarter inch strips or you can sister new joists to raise that floor. And if you raise that floor, that that full inch and an eighth you set this pan it's all nice and flush and then you can just uh, do your waterproofing over top of that but if you're really in a scenario where you just don't have the time or the ability to want to cut out all that flooring um, I really do think the next best thing is now and, and I'm going to be demonstrating this soon because I just think it makes the most sense is to just use some floor leveler um, and just basically set that pan in that recess that's three quarter inch below and then fill the rest up. Now, I don't have any videos on that specific demonstration, but this is basically going over Dietra heat. Now, I did a Dietra heat mat in this system, but this is basically um, a, a liquid waterproofing that I went over top. Or whatever the bag is telling you to mix it. Uh, mixing it that two minutes is going to make it flow easier. And using a good mixer like this really helps. I'll put the link in the description below for that. Now, this was going over teacher heat wires um, to fill in um, that waffle, but this was allowing me to get an extra quarter inch to fill up above. And what I'm using here is just a gauge rake, but you can use a squeegee or even a broom if you had to just to move this around and yep. get it to where you need it. Now you can see that I'm just making that level with the shower yeah, pan. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, that's all I'm trying to achieve here with this. And then, again, it's just so much easier than actually thin setting and filling in all that waffle using the floor leveler. So I'm just continuing to agitate it, move it around. There's the full scope. So I really think that's one of the easiest ways to go. And then if your floor was unlevel in any way, you can always just set your shower pan level in this area and then just floor level your outside area floor and then just waterproof over that with the Curdy membrane. Or if you want to use the Dietra to get the uncoupling membrane, you can do that as well. So there's definitely a bunch of different ways you can get that floor height. But no matter what, if you're going to go Schluter, you're going to have to raise your bathroom floor height, uh, most likely at least a quarter inch. Um, that's before tile. So know that you're, you know, by the time you're done with your tiling, you're going to be about one inch in your entire bathroom um, higher uh, than maybe what's what's existing there. So uh, keep that in mind, depending on where your transition is and what you have going on there. But 
Um, that's usually not a big deal, especially if it's going up against hardwood or carpet. Those are the two traditional. Now, where you might, you know, might feel a little weird and there might be a tripping hazard is, you know, everyone's starting to use this LVP um, flooring that's really thin. It's only like eighth inch thick. So that's where you might have a three quarter inch bump up coming into your bathroom. Still, three quarters is not bad. Anything over an inch and a quarter, that's when it starts to becoming a tripper, tripping hazard in my mind. Um, you know, I always dread that inch and a half transition strip at the doorway because that is a nightmare. If you have carpet, it's not the end of the world. Hardwood, not too, too bad. Uh, but any thinner flooring than that, then you're just really in a painful situation trying to make that look right or keep it from being a tripping hazard. Way. And, and the main reason oh, I didn't even know I had that in the video there. <laughs> because I had to refinagle all of my plumbing in this bathroom. The floor was in a real bad shape, so I had to really replace it anyways. Um, so it made it easier just to add quarter inch strips on top of these joists. But just know that in a shower, you know, a 30 inch by 60 inch shower with the Schluter system, you're gonna have to raise that floor um, a quarter inch or more to meet up with it. So that was the end product of that bathroom. This will be all coming out on my YouTube channel soon. Um, still just have to get to that editing. I love that niche. I got a lot of great tips on how to build that niche. Um, but just, yeah, the Schluter system, definitely really affordable. I think overall for the Schluter system, because I used the membrane on drywall, uh, the, the Curdy membrane, and then I just did the shower pan. Uh, boy, I think I only had maybe $600 in waterproofing altogether for that. So that's a really, really, really reasonable price for waterproofing and having a curbless system. It's really kind of hard to beat. Again, if I would have done weedy on this whole system with the waterproofing on the outside of the floor, I mean, talking about $1,500. And in any of the other systems that I was just discussing, probably close to about the same. So Schluter has definitely come out with something. If you can raise that outside floor area, um, has made a real big difference uh, for helping out with that. Here's a couple other Schluter systems I've done over the years, curbless. Um, this one actually was over concrete, so this one doesn't really necessarily count, but I use the Schluter drain for that. This is the one that's already on my channel as well. This is up in um, basically a 4x4 four four shower that I did uh, with the Schluter system. And then this is another bathroom I did a couple years ago uh, in an older home. So I didn't really get the finished pictures of this, but this is just a pebble, obviously penny tile meeting up with the outside floor. So some of the new, some of the older homes, you definitely have the ability to, um, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of these old, old homes, you would have, um, basically, uh, three quarter inch planks, uh, wood one by 12s that went, that went diagonally and then a, a half inch layer or a three quarter inch layer of plywood. So you have like an inch and a half, which really turns out great. I mean, cause that makes it really easy, but make sure you, uh, pull up, you know, get my guide below here. It kind of goes to highlights all this different information um, in a more detailed written form with the uh, pros and cons of all of the different issues on there. And uh, yeah, so uh, what else was I gonna say? I guess this was just about, oh, uh, this is I guess what, what the pan would look like without the floor leveler. And so, you know, this is where, um, you know, so you could see how the pan is sitting up a quarter inch out of the offside floor. So that's where I think just floor leveling the whole outside floor to meet up with that. Now I did do uh, heated flooring inside of the shower. So that, that kind of creates its own issues in a lot of ways. But uh, if you just use a, you know, in a five by eight shower, you could probably only, you know, probably need three bags of uh, floor leveler to get up a quarter inch and, and be nice and even with it. So mountain bike trails, huh, good to see you here. So, all right, well, it's a beautiful day out there. It must be why there's us so many people on the chat today. So, But thanks for everyone who is here today. Uh, I definitely appreciate the support and all the new uh, subscribers and all the new, uh, you know, all the, all the new things that are going on here. So next week, you might see me on a couple of live streams that I might be doing throughout the day. But definitely going to be adding to my stories on here on uh, YouTube because uh, I'm going to be going to the covering show which is uh, a really awesome um, forum. If you're a contractor, I at least recommend you go one of them. At some point, you'll, you'll really uh, be able to rub elbows with all the other people that are um, 
you know, showing this stuff online, you'll be able to meet a lot of, see all the different types of manufacturers out there and all the great tile displays. It really is something tremendous to see. This one's out in Vegas. So if you, if anybody on the channel is going out there, hit me up. I'd love to meet up with you, discuss uh, tiling in bathrooms and see how things are going. So, all right, guys, thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon.